Hey guys, how you doing tonight? This is Bear with Bear's Den Acrylic Art, back with another painting video. So I have a different uh, camera angle. I'm actually holding my phone because I wanted you to see this semicircle that I have masked out uh, with some masking fluid because I am going to be trying something different, a different kind of a split base. Uh, that when it is all dry, I am hopefully going to be embellishing with some metal leafing. So, fingers crossed. And the large space is going to be Payne's Gray. The black, smaller space, or the smaller space, rather, is going to be black. So I just wanted you to see that before I flood the canvas and get my, uh, you know, normal angle. So let me get the canvas flooded and I'll see you back here in just a couple minutes. All right, guys, thank you for sticking around. So as you can see, I have my little cutout mapped out. Now, obviously, there was probably a smarter way of doing this, but it's me, so why would I trouble myself with intelligence? Um, so clearly, once this is all dry, I will go back in and clean this up. I just wanted to have it down because the Dutch pour we're going to be doing tonight is going to be relegated to the side of the canvas that is towards me. And then I have something planned for this negative space. Um, so to that end, we're doing a Dutch pour tonight. Uh, one, because I haven't done one in a minute, uh, and two, because the idea in my head looks pretty good. Um, now, I've got a 24 by 36 um, traditional edge canvas, so it's three quarters of an inch. Well, this is an edge canvas from Jerry, so it's 11 sixteenths. Um, and the reason I'm trying this, and I have not done a canvas this size in a long time, is because uh, at my local Jerry's, which is just over the bridge from Philly in um, Lawrenceville, New Jersey, they had floating frames for this size and this depth um, for under twelve dollars. You know, so that's eighty percent off. So I figured I would be remiss if I passed on that. So I got a bunch of these canvases and a bunch of the frames. I also got some 12 by 12s for under $7 a piece. So I'm excited to see how this looks, all right? So our Dutch pour, like I said, we're gonna have a horizontal flow going this way, all right? And I've got some, I've got like a gunmetal, I've got a pearl, gold, a platinum, and some deeper reds that I think will all play nicely together in the sandbox. Uh, at least that is my hope because I have tried getting something on this canvas twice already to no avail. Uh, so I really, <laughs> I really just need a win. So that's what we're going for. All right, so the first color I'm gonna put down, this is Gunmetal by Deco Art Multi-Surface Metallics. So, like I said, we're going to keep everything horizontal, uh, starting, well, we'll say, something like that. And I want to make sure I give myself space to blow this out without infringing too much on the negative space. All right, so let's do the other half, shall we? Perfect. All right, so next I have Iridescent Pearl Fine by Golden. Just for some highlight and just to give something 
for the other colors to kind of stand out against. And man, I need to clean the nozzles of these bottles. All right, next, this is Rich Gold by Atelier, which I have used uh, in the last couple paintings. So I am really getting my money's worth out of the little eight ounce jar that I bought. And I can tell that this thickened up in the bottle. You see how it's coming out like mustard, like all squiggly? And shame on me for not checking. But, oh well, it should still be fine. All right, so Platinum by Folk Art Treasure Gold. Again, these are all going to stand out against the Payne's Gray, which is going to dry a lot darker. Now, the base coat, I should mention, was mostly Payne's Gray. It was a slop bucket situation. So there was definitely some something metallic in here because it definitely has, and we're just going to pull that out. That's a piece of dried paint from the bottle. Um, lost my train of thought. Uh, it was definitely some metallic, I think some gold, um, because it does have a shimmer to it. All right, Fire Opal by Folk Art Treasure Gold, which this whole series, I think I said before, I am just in love with, you know, just it's a splurge because, you know, 15 bucks for four ounces for, you know, a folk art paint. All right, and last, because I like ending my Dutch pours with something dark on top. This is Alizarin Crimson by Golden. And I want, you know, another reason I wanted this on top is because this has, oh, and something funky just came out. Uh, obviously, it's not a metallic, it's not a pearl, but golden paints have a um, very glossy finish to them. All right, let's see, where did that happen? It's possible I just made it up. Well, we'll blow it out and find it. All right, so some housekeeping. And then we are dusting off Drew Barrymore. So I'm going to start right here, go this way, then come back. Fingers crossed.
okay all in all pretty good uh this is the one part that i'm not in love with just because the base coat got kicked up a lot but overall i mean i'm really digging on the color palette So what I'm gonna do, my friends, is I think I might break out my palette knife and see if I can't do something here. Um, you know, if for nothing else, you know, after it dries, I can come back in and try doing some brush work and go from there. Uh, so anyway, my friends, let me do this and I will bring you in because I know I'm real far away uh, and I would love for you to see what this looks like because there is some great lacing there is some cell action happening um, so let me do the housekeeping and I will see you down here in just a couple minutes okay guys thank you for sticking around <clears throat> so let's go right to this part where I took my palette knife and a skewer and I drew some lines and I put in some, uh, you know, man-made or bear-made cells in this particular instance. And what I will probably do, well, no, what I will definitely do is after this dries, I'm going to go back in with a brush and maybe fill this in a little bit more so it looks less, um, I guess, jarring. But <clears throat> all things considered, uh, I do like the way that this blew out. You know, even though the base coat did get kicked up in a couple spots, um, you know, overall, I really do like it. Um, I think there is some really, really great texture. I love this little patch of lacing here. Um, so yeah, once this is all dry, I'm going to come back in and clean up this arc and then I will do um, probably some metal leaf embellishments, which is, you know, typically my thing. But let's see how this dries and we will go from there. So let's check back in a couple days. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this video. Um, I'm really hoping this dries because I really like the way it looks at the moment. Uh, so fingers crossed. Um, you know, if you're new and you like what you see, please consider doing all of the youtube -y things. Um, hit the subscribe, hit the thumbs up. Um, hit the bell icon. That all helps me out so much. Um, by all means, please feel free to leave a comment. Um, you know, once this is all finished, this piece will be available for purchase. Uh, and you can find all of my other work as well on my Facebook or Instagram under Bears Den Acrylic Art, uh, working on getting my website revamped. Um, you know, if you're curious or have any questions, you can email me directly at bear at bearsdenacrylicart.com or you can message me directly through those platforms. So let's check back in a couple days for the dry results. Um, yeah, I'm kind of excited to see what this looks like. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. All right, dry results number one. So everything dried absolutely beautifully. I am going to go in and with a brush and fill in some of that. What my task is right now is to dry, try and get the masking fluid up so I can figure out, you know, how to even it out and go from there. I was going to try and hold my phone and do that at the same time, but I'm probably going to need to really concentrate and take my time. So let me do that and I'll see you back here in just a couple minutes. Okay, that took a little longer than I wanted it to. So what I'm going to do is come in with my little X-Acto knife and I'm going to try and clean up 
these edges because, you know, for the most part, it came out pretty well. Although, had I to do this over again, I probably would just avoid the masking fluid altogether. I don't know if this was the right application for it, but, you know, what are you going to do? So, I am going to, you know, try and clean that up a little bit. It's just a little jagged. What I don't like, and, you know, you live, you learn, is, you know, this is going to get filled in with metal leafing, so I'm not, you know, particularly worried. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting, but, you know, what are you going to do? So... I am going to do that. I am going to fill this in with some metal leafing. And what I was debating, oh, and I am going to paint this edge the same as the base color. Uh, what I am going to do, however, uh, you know, I was debating doing like a stencil in the negative space or uh, something staggered along this arc, which is what I think I'm going to do. I might do like phases of the moon. Who knows? So I'm going to putz around with this for a little bit and we'll check back and see what it ends up looking like because I'm curious myself. All right, guys, here is the finished product. Um, I love the idea. I don't love the execution, and that is totally on me. Um, you can see the, you know, I tried evening out where the, uh, what do you call it? The, the masking fluid was, and that was met with limited success. Now there's, it looks a little blurry here because to try and, you know, mask everything after I put the gold leaf down, I brushed on some dry uh, pigment, some of the TLP ore, which is just gorgeous. Um, but I just need to go back in with a detail brush and clean it up. But, you know, overall, it's not bad at all. And I think, you know, as my mom would say, a man on a galloping horse wouldn't notice. So hopefully y'all are galloping on horses. Now, the other thing is, you know, just real quick, uh, you know, just went in with some of the alizarin crimson, the fire opal, and the iridescent pearl, and just kind of layered, uh, you know, since they're each transparent, and again, you pull back and at a distance, everything kind of looks copacetic. So overall, you know, like I said, I really like the concept. Not in love with the execution, but you know what? Overall, I'll still take it. You know, it's not like anyone else is going to see this. This one was for me. So yay.